Mullah Ali Qari actually says in the Nib Thoughts, Mullah Ali Qari, he says that there's actually a khilaf, there's a difference of opinion as to which man or woman is better. The one who sinned and made Tawbah or the one who never sinned at all. There's actually a difference of opinion as to which one is better. Right? Ultimately, he said, the one who never sinned is better because he's closer to the prophets who are masum. They're free of major sin. But it's just interesting that you have this uh, you have this difference of opinion regarding this issue. Ibn Atakillah says in one of his aphorisms, he says, an act of sin that leads to shame and impoverishment and brokenness before Allah is better than a good action that leads to arrogance. There's a beautiful story in Book 40 of the Ihya. It's called Kitab al-Fikr al-Mawt wa ma ba'ahu by Abu Hamad al-Ghazali. Ihya uh, al din This is Summa Theologica of traditional Islam. He tells the story of a man who was a town drunkard and he you know, opened fasting. He used to spend his days in the habut, in the, in the tavern, in the bar, whatever, drinking. And he died. And the people of the town refused to wash his body. We're not going to wash his body, he's a fasting. Right? You can't bury him in our cemetery either. So his poor wife had to wash his body, and then she made some sled and took him all the way out into the desert with the intention of burying her husband and praying over his body. And while this was happening, uh, she's digging this ditch. A Gnostic, an Arif Billah, a Gnostic, walks by. He sees the scene and he rushes down and he says, I want to help you bury your husband. And she says, fine. So he buries the body and he prays over it. And then she says, why did you want to help me? Do you know who my husband is? He said, yes, I know very well your husband. And I wanted to help you. And she says, what do you mean? And he says, last night I had a dream and I heard a voice that said, tomorrow you'll be traveling in the desert. You'll see a woman trying to bury her husband. Help her because her husband was a man of Jannah. He's a, he's a man of paradise. Right? So he prays over the body and then he leaves. Now the townspeople come out and they see what had happened. So they approach his wife and they say, why did he do that? And she says, I don't know. And they said, can you think of a reason why he's a man of Jannah? And she said, there's only three reasons I can think of. He was never devoid of one or two orphans that he would love and care for more than his own children. And every morning when he would wake up from his wine, he would change his clothes, make, take a shower, make ghusl, and go and pray salat al-fajr fi jama'ah fi masjid. He would pray in congregation in the mosque, the morning prayer. And when he would come home from his wine, he would go into a secluded corner of the room, he'd fall down to his knees, he'd raise his hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and say, Oh Allah, which corner of hell are you going to fill with this wretched man? Referring to himself. And he'd be in that state of supplication and repentance until he fell asleep. This is why we need to be in a state of toba. The word toba in its etymology means to turn, right? To turn. To boot in Allah, literally, turn to Allah. Ya tawa. Oh, the most forgiving, turn towards us. 